The detective realizes the cop is actually the murderer. Let's check it out. While cops are here to help and protect citizens, what happened? Whoa, whoa. Bro, got three people trying to take him out the car, man. When they're actually secret killers in disguise. Well, how do you even find that out, man? It's Kelly? Kelly? Yeah, right now you're charged with murder. And it is Kelly. No! Here yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean, like, guys, I would react the same way if I was going to jail for a while like that guy is. I'm probably in jail right now. There are three examples of when cops try to get away with murder. Three examples? What the heck? Bro, they let the... Is that guy over seven foot? No, that's inches. But, the... guys. I wonder if they did it all duty or on duty. I, I, I forgot. I was going to say something. Starting with the horrifying case of William Talley. On the 11th of May 2019, police received a worrying phone call explaining that former police sergeant William Talley had been in an argument with his girlfriend, Kelly Levinson. Snap. Okay, okay. Classic domestic abuse, bro. At some uh, or domestic, uh, probably, but domestic uh dispute some point during the fight he fired gunshots at her william quit bro you, you messed up man don't be doing that man don't be so trigger happy bro come on man that is not cool that's not cool right guys he left the scene stealing kelly's truck but was worried he may have done more damage than he realized so i don't know anything since then so nobody's here has been injured no, that that's what I told him. Yeah, just fired shots at her. That's pretty much the most one of the most deadly forces in the world. He, he's gonna have to go and check out and see what happened, bro. When I called, he told me that he was in shelter. The police had to immediately treat this like a crime. Dude, this would be so sad if I like I. I I genuinely feel for everybody that has gone through something like this. I'm seen and decided to search the house to ensure Kelly's safety. There was one thing on the officers' minds, and they were all silently pleading that they wouldn't find her dead. Deputy Brown, who used to work with the house. The fact that they had to bust the door open is not a good sign, right, guys? There's a dog in there. Yep, she's right there. Sorry to get mad. Upon it. Left the dog and everything, bro. Entering the house, evidence of some kind of physical altercation was scattered throughout. As they entered the kitchen, he's trying to make a last dish effort to like free flee some somehow, some way, right, guys? No, they would find Kelly's dead body lying on the ground. With all the evidence the police had, it wasn't difficult. Shaking my head, man. Let me turn off the light. Difficult for them to determine their main suspect but catching him was another matter. They knew that William had received both police and SWAT training, so he'd be difficult to catch. However, all of a sudden, police received a phone call informing them William had gotten into a car crash. Dang, bro. Car crash, everything, bro. He must have been drinking or something, man. The cops rushed to the hospital where they found their number one suspect waiting for them, bruised and bloodied. We're gonna take care of you now. <laughs> And they get not not the kind of taken care of that he wants. So, right, guys, not the kind of taken care of he wants. Sorry, let me just try to find this light setting. <laughs> the light setting that I need here, guys. The new ring light, guys. Good. Uh, hold on. Oh, there we go. Found it. Okay. It was the other button. Okay, let me just turn the brightness down. Guys, I remember it. Guys, I've been to jail and they th those handcuffs are not fun to use. Have on you, bro. Once William was discharged from the hospital, he was immediately brought to an interrogation room. Dude, he put his head down like that, man. He knows he's in trouble. He knows he's in trouble, bro. Where the investigation would truly begin. Can I ask what my charges are? Yeah, right now you're charged with murder. <sighs> Charged with violation of open office, and you're charged who with um who possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. And he said straight up murder, bro. Who else is gonna be in the house though? I don't think the dog did it. Who 
Mm-hmm. That's what we're hoping you can tell us. Maybe once we start talking about it a little bit. Guys, do you think he's gonna confess here? Do you think he's gonna confess? Confess here? Um, he wasn't back. He wasn't. Who was it? Kelly? Well, this is Kyle. William mentions two names here, Becky and Kelly. Of course, we know Kelly to be his girlfriend, but William was actually married to another woman named Rebecca Talley, who he'd been cheating on. William obviously- Wait, he's, he's married- How do you get married twice, guys? Isn't there laws against that? What the heck? He's married to both of them. Lee appears dazed and confused, but whether this is just an act or not is another question. We, the world may never know, guys. He'd spent multiple days in the hospital and was discharged after being medically cleared, so it's unlikely he'd still be this out of it. Regardless, it at least seems to be... He's like, he's trying to come up with a story, man. Something like that, bro. He's screwed. ...keeping him calm. At least for now. And you can sign this... Nobody's talking with me about the... <laughs> Well, we're gonna get to that. That's what we're hoping to get to. No, I'm not talking until somebody talks to me. I can tell you who, if we can get started there. And it is Kelly. No! Don't do that. No! No! Tally, calm down. Calm down, bro. Tally. Deal. Really? Thing is, actually, I have never seen anybody, anybody ever vomit in like a in an interrogation room, guys. What the heck? <laughs> Dang, bro, that's a pain he's gonna be a feel for a while, man. I feel bad for him, bro, but doing him doing what is did he did he did is like a, not it, not like something that should be taken lightly, man. Like, it's a, it's hysterical, bro. It, it's uh, unfathomable how long, you know what I mean? It's too much. That's why, that's why I don't, I don't do bad things like that, man. There's a small chance William really is this distraught over Kelly's death. I'm sure he is. But he was completely unaware of... I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's more distraught about, uh, actually going in and, you know, serving that time that he's gonna serve. I, 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 I think he's just having, like, a... Visions of how long he's gonna stay inside that cell and stuff, man. Of what he was doing at the time. So it seems more likely that he's actually just using this as a guise to vent and scream about how his life is pretty much finished and over a small argument with his mistress. He's also likely frustrated that he got caught so easily. Remember, this is a man with SWAT and police training. He knows how to evade the cops. But almost instantly after going on the run, his plans were shut down in an incredibly unpredictable way. William manages to calm down while the detective talks to him, but only for a few short seconds. Hey, bro. I mean, if he's crashing his truck and like that, he's not, he's not prepared to, to that prepared, right, guys? Guys. This one hits home for him though, so that's why. I'm sure he's brought people to the the kind of room that, you know, he, he's in right now, guys. You know what I mean? Bill. Bill, no. Stop, Bill. Relax. Bill, stop. It's all unnecessary, Bill. If you don't want to talk to us, that's fine. But let's not, let's not do this, okay? Okay? Just, let's not do this. Who else to guard? Right now, you're hurting yourself. I don't care about me. Well, I'm going to hurt. There's no one I keep hearing when people whisper. Or whispers. It. Okay, well, what, what, what's, what whispering do you hear? No, tell me. Tell me the truth. Okay. There's no one else hurt. Okay. Bro. Guys, it, it still might be an act, man. He's going on like a tangent now, it seems. What you're watching is a man who knows without a doubt that he's guilty doing everything he can to try and find a way out. He's panicking and the cops were probably extremely relieved when William finally asked for a lawyer and put an end to this dramatic in <laughs> yeah, but... interrogation. However, this... 
Man, that sucks though. Obviously, it didn't help him at all, as the detectives already had all the evidence they needed to convict him. And Williams Halley was sentenced to life behind bars. Despite William being a local cop and even knowing some of the officers involved, this case was handled. Imagine you had to interrogate somebody that you worked with for so long, man. That sucks. Perfectly. A stark contrast. I'm sure they were not happy, guys. Contrast to that of Matthew Boynton, whose case was so weird and corrupt that the cops ended up investigating a shooting that never even happened. You know what the heck? No, you can't give a sworn statement and lie on it. Why would you do that, Matthew? On the 15th of April 2016, police found Jessica Boynton hidden in the closet of her home with a gunshot wound to the head and a police issued firearm in her hand. The county sheriff reportedly ruled her dead at the scene, but there was a problem. Jessica was neither dead nor shot. After she was rushed to the hospital, the ER found no entrance wounds or bullets. Instead, they found evidence of a blunt force attack. Dang. How do you declare her dead when she probably has like a heartbeat and stuff, man? Don't they have like something to, uh, to test? To the back of her head. This case is already incredibly confusing, but what's worse is that the police's number one suspect, Matthew Boynton, told cops that he received a text from Jessica saying she was about to commit suicide. After rushing home, he heard two gunshots coming from the house and called the police. Matthew was taken to the police uh -oh. station and interrogated. He's like, oh, let me let me get your statement on the record, bro. You know what I mean? But it's good that she wasn't hurt, though. But was caught lying about a vital piece of evidence. This is where we join the detectives as they try to unwrap this baffling web of lies. Do you recognize that bag? Yes, that bag that Jessica let me use to put all my gym stuff in when we used to be together. Okay, so when's the last time you saw that bag? Uh, it's been a long time. <coughs> like I said, I, when I used to work out at, um, there's two gyms in Thomaston. I don't remember the name of it. I used that one, and I had a uh, gray Nike bag I used to work out in. Um, so I interchanged my stuff like protein drinks, um, powder shakes, like pre-workout, uh, workout shorts, pants, shoes, whatever. Guys, what is he talking about? I put it in that bag or my Nike bag. Suspects who aren't telling the truth tend to over-explain as they feel they have something to prove to detect. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, dude, you're going off on a tangent. He doesn't need to know all that stuff. Detectives. If they can give lots of information over, they think even even him him he should know because he does a lot of or did a lot of interrogations. It'll convince the detective that they're not lying, as they couldn't possibly make all of that up. However, in actuality, suspects telling the truth will give a more instinctual, simplified answer to the question. Guys, when I when I do that, it, it makes me feel, look uh, more guilty, right? Because I'm just like telling this truth straight up. Because they don't have to think about it as much. Bear that in mind as the interview continues. So, when's the last time that you saw that bag? I mean, it's been a while. Like, I don't I don't know an exact date. I don't know. I think my stepdad, he he had it in the I think the white trailer, and that that's been a while. And he brought it, but I haven't been through it or anything. Put it in my storage thing in my house. Which is like when you pull in the driveway. Mm -hmm. It's a little storage thing on the right. You open the door and it's got all my stuff in there. I declared that some of it out recently. That was tossed in there, but I mean, it's in there with a. Bro, he's talking like he's just explaining something normally, bro. He's, he's got like a, a defensive kind of like body language stance, it, it looks like. Bunch of my stuff, like a brown tub, I used to keep in my old patrol car with gym mm -hmm. stuff in it and work stuff. Remember, that answer was given in response to the question, when was the last time you saw this bag? Something that could have been answered in a single sentence. The detectives already knew that Matthew was lying about this bag as that's the whole reason he was brought to this second interrogation. But now they're 100% sure he's hiding something and they're about to call him out on it. All right, Matthew, I've known you a long time when y'all were in the process of moving and you moved into the house that you're at now, your residence. Did you or did you not see this bag? Yes, sir, it's in my storage room, in the, in the garage. Now, why would I be holding a picture of this bag? I guess because Jessica brought it into you. Guys, man, he's coming up with everything, bro. Why would Jessica have it if you had it at your house? Um, I don't know. I guess somebody got it from my garage <clears> and my shed. Who would have gotten it? Um, 
there's a couple of people. Okay. Come on now. Come on now. Just just come clean, bro. All right. Exactly who? The bag was completely filled with female clothes. And this is one photo of it. That's not yours. No. This whole thing might not seem like a big deal, but it's actually the root of a much bigger problem. This bag, along with everything in it, belonged to Jessica. So when it was discovered in Matthew's possession after he told police that he'd handed all of her belongings over, it confirmed that he had been lying under oath. Again, a small issue at first, but now that the detectives know he's comfortable lying about this, Thankfully, it, she wasn't hurt that bad, though. They know that almost every piece of information he's given them could be completely untrue. He's a known liar at this point, right, guys? The bag was turned into us. We have possession of the bag. We have evidence that <coughs> said it came out of your storage room. Is that true? Yes, sir. He, he let it all, off like a soft, okay, bro, like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm screwed, kind of, okay, you know what I mean? Is there anything you'd like to say? No, sir. Do you believe do you believe that statement to be accurate and true? Not now. Did you believe it then? No, sir. Matthew has now essentially confessed to stealing the bag of Jessica's belongings and lying under oath. There is the question of why he did this, but we haven't even gotten started on the assault part of the case. Why Jessica was found unconscious in their closet after allegedly texting Matthew she was going to shoot herself. As it turns out, though, the police would also... It's obviously like he like, hit her with a baton or something, guys. You know what I mean? So ...never move on to that part of the case, and it remained completely unanswered. Matthew was charged with stealing and lying under oath, and after being placed on administrative leave, he resigned from the force, but went completely uncharged for whatever happened on the night of April 15th. Many people have been left wondering why that may be, but the most obvious answer lies in police corruption, and the fact that the county sheriff just so happened to be Matthew's granddad, the same sheriff who lied by pronouncing Jessica dead at the well, she's not dead, why would they charge her with a murder? The Start charging with murder, right guys? Scene. What's worse is that Jessica's head trauma left her without any memory of that night, so it's likely this case will remain Dang, that's that looks like a lot of trauma she endured then, right guys? Sheesh. Unsolved forever. But people thought the same about the murder of Sherry Rasmussen, which lay unsolved for 23 years before new information... Okay, here's the best one here. They say the best for last, you know what I mean? ...revealed that the culprit was actually one of the police force's best detectives. Now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? After decades of investigations, DNA evidence revealed that Stephanie was very likely the culprit of a murder committed in 1986. Because of the high... Hey, bro, I think she probably thought she was, like, off... Uh, off the hook at that point, right guys? ...high stakes nature of the case. The detectives made sure to meticulously plan this interrogation. Stephanie was a really successful detective herself, and she had recently received recommendations for her good work on a theft case. So the detectives used this, and brought her in under the guise that they needed help with a case. I don't want to talk about this in the squadron, because I, I don't know who people are listening, true, and true. if we go to my side, everybody's yeah. always wondering what... She's already saying that's true, bro. Doesn't that kind of give signs out that she did it? Oh, yeah, sure, no okay. An interrogation room is a strange place for such a conversation to take place, so to put her mind at ease, detectives told her this was the place they'd least be likely to be overheard, as the case details were strictly confidential. Sherry Rasmussen's body had been found at her home after being shot three times. At the time, police suspected the murder was a result of a burglary gone wrong, but the case went cold when they couldn't identify the suspect. However, 23 years later, when revisiting the case, detectives found evidence that led them towards Stephanie, a girl who had been trapped in a love triangle with Sherry and her husband, John Rutten. So the detectives decided- Damn bro, why would you do that? Come on now. Decided to bring up- That's so sad. Up John's name to see how she'd react. Are you guys friends? Close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. I mean, yeah. I mean, what's this all about? It's a case we're working on, and it involves John, and in there, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we good friends. Um, lived in the dorms for... I lived in the dorms for two years. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean, we dated. Uh-huh. Uh you know, um, 
I mean, is what's this all about? Dang, bro. He's like, uh, uh, I'm screwed, aren't I? I'm in an interrogation room. It's a case that went cold. Oh my gosh. Relating to uh, his wife. Both the detectives and Stephanie have tried to seem as friendly and relaxed as possible around each other, but Stephanie is obviously starting to get very anxious at this point. Even though the detectives gave a somewhat believable excuse, she is now in an interrogation room faced by two detectives being questioned about a girl she supposedly murdered 20 years earlier. I bet her heart spiked up so hard right there, man. Her breathing has become faster, and her language is defensive, and her movements have become more erratic. And you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then, you know, I, I got a problem with, you know, with that. Okay. Okay? So, you know, if you're, if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, hey, I'm a suspect. Well, I, now I got a problem with, you know, now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Obviously, you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that, you know, gets... Went on for hour, bro. Dang. Uh, cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. Because <laughs> now, now, now... Did her voice went faint there for a little, bro. Yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Stephanie chooses to provide DNA evidence, hoping her willingness to help out would ultimately prove her innocence. But, unfortunately for her, just five minutes later, the detectives decide they've heard enough and put her in cuffs. Months later, after a long and arduous trial, a decision was made by the jury. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Lazarus, guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen. We further find the murder was of the first degree. After hiding it for 23 years, Stephanie Lazarus was finally found guilty of murder and sentenced to 27 years behind bars. If you enjoy true crime, dang bro, uh, she'll probably get out before she uh, ends up dying though. Matthew's a monster. The fact that he hasn't been charged is insane. On the other note, she has she has full custody of her kids, which is amazing. After fighting for them, yeah, it sucks that happened. Matthew Boynton is sickening. He's obviously a liar and stealing her bag to prove his pettiness. Once cops start interrogating you, you have to ask for a liar. Intimidation tactics often work on criminals, but can induce false flags and on an innocent person. Okay, here. some additional details for the last case. There are already indications that Stevis need might be involved in the second, but that in the second case, it seems like the police are looking out for their own. Also, by the time of the 2009 interview, the detectives already had the DNA proof from a thrown away cup, which matched one from the bite mark. A question for a willingness to DNA uh, for, uh, to DNA testing was just poking a reaction. I mean, she, they just had to like get one of the cups in the the room <laughs> for to get our DNA. You know what I mean? But yeah, guys, that's the video. Peace out. Check out Doctor Sanity in the um. In the description, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, I do all my live streams on Twitch. Please consider donating, and I'll see you guys next one, guys. Uh, Twitch Prime.